Hello, my name is Adelaide Damoa and I'm an artist living and working in London, UK. During the coronavirus pandemic, um, I have been working on myself mainly. I've been doing a lot of reading, a lot of communing with uh, friends and fellow artists, curators, and people who work in um, the creative sector, or the same sector that I work in, namely fine art. And in the studio, um, I found myself going through a process of um, revaluing myself, revaluing my practice, which has led to um, going in unexpected directions, directions that I hadn't considered before. So my main focus in terms of the subject matter that I'm interested in talking about through my work is um, colonialism and feminism with some spirituality. That's my main focus. However, during the course of the pandemic, I found myself wanting to really explore colour in a big way, in a way that I hadn't explored colour before. With the coronavirus, I found myself wanting to really focus on making art for the, sh for the sheer joy of making art, as opposed to really focusing on that, those particular rather large and difficult sometimes subject areas, and really focusing on um, the process and the experience of making the work um, and also as the aesthetic and the form as opposed to really concentrating on my subject areas. This led me to another series of work called Dreams of Overcoming and it included a poem which was really an amalgamation of um, some of the real life experiences that I went through during lockdown, as well as bringing in some Greek myth, because I'm a fan of Greek myth, uh, as well as me making up some, some mythology um, and combining that with the mythologizing of my ancestors uh, through that work. In very practical terms, the pandemic meant that at the beginning of lockdown, there were two exhibitions that I was supposed to be involved in. In terms of the solo exhibition with Boogie Wall Gallery, that had to be um, cancelled. Again, that was supposed to be launched in April. Um, we ended up doing uh, initially an online presentation, which was amazing. It wasn't just uh, a web page that you go to with pictures of the images of the work. It was actually a virtual presentation of the work in the space, despite the fact that the work actually was not present in the space. The compromise was that we used the high res images of the work that we already had and um, used these amazing um, experts to do a 3D rendition, um, build a 3D rendition in cyberspace of the actual exhibition space and then place those works on the wall in the space, which was amazing. And it meant that people from all over the world still had access to the exhibition. And we still ended up having the, um, the physical exhibition, which lasted for a couple of months, just finished uh, last month. It was a negative that we ended up turn turning into a positive. Um, in terms of inspiration, I would say, yeah, it, it's, it really forced me to spend some time with myself and go inside of myself and rethink everything and go down the track that I wouldn't necessarily have gone down at this stage uh, because I simply had the time to really think and marinate. And I felt like I wanted to respond in a positive way. I wanted to respond with something that brought me joy. And all of my work brings me joy. All of my work is um, sort of a healing, it's a catharsis, but focusing on colour and joy and love in the work in the way that I have done with um, this new way of working has been really beneficial and sort of healing for me in a way psychologically. So from uh, the George Floyd and activation of Black Lives Matter to real people I know being seriously affected by the pandemic and people dying and everything. So it was, it's been, um, it's, it's been a blessing to be able to fall back on, on my work in that way. In terms of engaging with art, I've been engaging with my own work. I've been engaging with the gallery that I work with. Everything has really been online. So uh, I can't think of any specific examples that have stood out for me, aside from 
um, some of the really good um, virtual exhibitions like the ones that Josefina has done for Boogie Wall Gallery, to be honest. Some of those virtual exhibitions have really been amazing and stand out for me um, because I think uh, the temptation with online exhibitions is, like I say, to just have art on a web page, whereas I feel that something that's more interactive, like what Josephina did for Boogie Wall Gallery, has been um, really amazing. I feel that the, the pandemic has forced me personally to really know and understand that the lifestyle I had before was a bit over the top and um, wasn't ne it's not necessary, I think, for me to be flying around the world as much as I was last year um, in order to get the things done that I need to get done. That saves a lot of time, which gives me back more time for the studio and for important things like communing with friends and family. And that's something that last year, uh, and even up until um, probably um, March, I would say, I just never had time for myself and I have never had time for friends and family. And this experience has taught me that you can always make time um, just by restructuring things. And uh, in terms of um, my work specifically, like I say, I'm really, excited about this this new strand that I'm adding to my work. Um, so I'm excited to see where that takes me going forward. Thinking very seriously, more seriously than I was before, about the planet um, and about the impact that we all individually have on the planet. And some of that thinking is coming into my work as well. And that's but as a direct consequence of the pandemic and sitting down and having the time to really think about how the things I do are impacting the planet um, and my environment, but also as a consequence of spending time with other artists who I really admire, like a very good friend of mine who called Jasmine Pradesito, who um, is a, an amazing artist who uses um, an innovative material in her work, in sculpture, that removes damaging substances from the atmosphere. Spending a lot more time speaking to her, learning from her, um, is really, has caused me to think about the relationship between colonialism, environmentalism, and uh, how all of those things impact our world in the present and potentially in the future, how we can learn from the past, the mistakes that we've made in the past to um, to really build something a lot better. Mm -hmm.